cbs.com slash advantage. All right, 747 on this Tuesday morning, the uh, 19th day of November, and we are going to head to the WHBC news line and bring in the esteemed mayor of North Canton, Stephen Wilder. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning, Pam Cook, and thank you for that introduction. That's very kind of you. <laughs> well, you know, I always like to butter you up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine, okay? You can still drive through North Canton. But you got to be 35 miles an hour, okay? All right. All right. All right. I'll do it. I promise. Even though you know the mayor, okay? Yeah, even though I know the mayor. That's right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, All it's right. a busy day down there, isn't it, in uh, Canton and up here in North Canton? Yeah, it is. It really is. And so much is going on, and there are so many things uh, happening in your city. So let's just start out um, with the fire station levy and, you know, with the failure at the polls. Where does that leave you guys, and, and what's your next step there? That's a good question, Pam. Yeah, uh, I, you know, first of all, I want to thank the voters who did, you know, who made their voices known, and that uh, I think the funding of, uh, option would have had a mo- profound difference uh, on the safety and well-being of the lives of our firefighters and paramedics, and uh, would have impacted our positively on everyone that lives and comes into our community and our lives daily. Uh, we're going to regroup. We're going to look at funding resources, and that uh, uh, council will uh, be talking about things like this. And with administration's help, so we're just going to have to regroup and and look at our our resources again. Uh, I was disappointed that uh, that issue and also the uh, phone or the uh, street levy were defeated. Uh, but uh, I, I took a manageable risk to put it out in the general election. Uh, I had to gauge where our our community was, and I understand there was a number of well, you would. Maybe you'll agree with me that I think that our our presidential and some of our state races down to our local races were a little chaotic. And I think that affected a lot of people in their choices. And I think one thing, too, was uh, we were in our uh, uh, we had to balance our budget. And I think uh, our citizens were considering, you know, if we can't balance our budget. You know, how can they help uh, fund a fire and paramedic or a consolidated facility? So have they, yeah, have they just, given you any idea of what they they would be comfortable with at all? Uh, you mean the uh, citizens or council? Yes, the citizens. Uh, you know what? I, no, I, I, I've only seen a couple excerpts on the media uh, why may, some people voted against it. Uh, you know, there was only 233 votes. That, that was the difference. Yeah. So there was another, you know, uh, 4,629 people who saw a need for a fire station. And uh, a new consolidated, you know, we, we've gone from a volunteer fire department to a full-time fire department, and that building is 52 years old. Uh, Pam, I think we did everything we could to have town hall meetings, put things on our website, on our Facebook, invite people at our 720, our Main Street Festival to visit our stations. And I think a great number, well, uh, obviously, uh, except 233 votes, I think maybe just voted. They didn't want to pay more taxes. Yeah. I think that's what it was. So we're going to look at that regroup. I think we're going to have to put the road uh, levy back on. We had an opportunity to, well, that's going to end here this end of the year. The street levy is expiring in 2024. So I think in May we'll, we'll want to revisit the, uh, the street levy, which I was c- concerned also that that was defeated too. Uh, yeah. And you could be right. The climate could be, you know, a lot of that as well. So I think so. And mm-hmm. and I understand, you know, people are strapped. We're all on budget. And uh, and we're trying to, you know, do the best we can with what we have and uh, and try to find a common ground that we can, uh, you know, build a community that we want to live in now and for future generations. And, you know, keeping our roads up is a main part of that. And uh, and hopefully, you know, establishing a fire station or a new facility, one place, one location, and combine all our resources into one uh, and provide professional full-time, you know, firefighter and paramedic uh, 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 response to our community. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we look at those things. And, again, the citizens of North Canton made their choice, so I want to thank them for, you know, showing their gratitude for the very things that uh, they most deserve and uh our gratitude. All right. So now another source of frustration is uh, the situation with the Hoover property. You know, 
Tell yeah, us where that stands. Uh, well, same, <laughs> same thing. We, uh, you know, we have a tax income financing uh, uh, proposal for them, and that's going to probably expire by 1231 of this year. And we, we did notify them about 60 days out that, you know, we want to know where their status was in trying to complete uh, some of the agreements and compensation agreements. Uh, and so to, to date, uh, the uh, industrial commercial property has uh, deeded 10.3 acres to our North Kent City School District, uh, probably for a future community indoor athletic facility. So they have met that obligation there. Uh, part of that uh, fifth agreement was uh, coming up with a $2.5 million contribution, I would say, or payment to the North Kent City School Districts. But that is uh, in a separate agreement that uh, uh, is between the uh, North Kent City School District and, and Industrial Commercial Property or Industrial Realty Group, IRG. Uh, so that has not been completed yet, but I, I think they're in discussions for uh, trying to get that done. And as of right now, uh, we, I put it out there that uh, we were frustrated, and we have been frustrated, but all along, uh, we've been trying to bring connectivity and unity uh, and going forward to help get the redevelopment of the Hoover West factory. And uh, at one of the council meetings, uh, it was discussed openly that uh, uh, I would say the majority of council is very discouraged and disappointed uh, that uh, for uh, at least for my term uh, over the last five years, uh, we haven't been able to uh, get any closer where than we are now. And I think uh, so. We're going to meet with them this week uh, and uh, see what we can find out on Thursday. Uh, uh, have a commitment from Mr. Stu Lichner and Jeff Martin, a senior vice president of property. And so they're going to come into town and, and sit down and we want to see where we're at with the uh, going forward with the uh, redevelopment of the West factory. So that's good to hear. It's good to hear that the parties are getting together at least. Um, because, yeah, I think probably like council, residents are frustrated. You're frustrated. You know, it just seems like uh, it could be so cool. I always say that. I look at it and think this could be so cool, you know. I but, think so. I think our, our hopes, Pam, were, you know, with the purchase of the Hoover West factory by Industrial Realty Group uh, and the real estate solutions provided, you know, by ICP for the redevelopment of the project, I think it would have been another success story and one that enriches the lives of, you know, all the people who live, work in our community and, and would be a success story for them. Um, they have invested a lot of money across the street, uh, at least $14 million in remediating a building site, especially for the Hoover or for the Diebold Nixdorf building. That was, what, 160,000 square feet. Uh, you know, we have six to 700 employees now. Diebold is now our North Canton is now uh, the world headquarters for Diebel next door. And working with ICP, they're going to add another 100 jobs uh, in some light manufacturing and reassembly for, uh, for Diebel next door on part of the uh, Hoover complex off of Taft. And we're look, still looking at maybe 80 to 90 employees coming in from a uh, financial firm who wants to locate here in North Canton. And that would be on the East Maple Street uh, you know, like the white offices there, the white building, mm -hmm. yeah. or, or close to where uh, pure workers comp. So, you know, we are working on those things. But unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, it, it's an incredible investment, uh, you know, that, dem that ICP has demonstrated to this date to get that facility up and running. But uh, uh, it's, it just has not progressed as represented as represented by ICP or IRG. And, and truthfully, I think the spirit and unity of the engagement uh, has reached, is reaching a, uh, an impasse. And that's why they're coming in, I think, this Thursday. Because I, I said the action, the, the ask remains, you know, what action can ICP or IRG provide, you know, as a foundation for the future success of the redevelopment of the Hoover West factory. So uh, I put it out there for them, and we want to see – you know, is there an opportunity to go forward or where, where are we right now? Yeah. Well, we are completely out of time, but I know okay. we'll have a chance Sorry. to chat again about so many other things. Well, let's, we'll get that scheduled and have you back on. How's that sound? 
Okay. Sorry I used up all your time. No, no, this was great. We all, we all want to hear that information for sure. That was fantastic. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we did balance the budget last night, and I want to thank council for that to go forward. So. Oh, good news. That's uh, good news. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Stay safe. Keep well. Bye-bye. Kenton's Morning News with Pam Cook. If you-